inspector and expert will get 229 to see they don't cheat. <laughs> so, good evening, everybody. At the outset, I thank Dr. Bhakti Sabhutar for organizing this conference and making me a part of it and keeping a tough talk, topic. So, early glu abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy should be treated. So, greetings to all of you from Bangalore. Ladies and gentlemen, seven week pregnant lady has come to your clinic referred by obstetrician FBS 110, PPBS 201, HBNC 6.9. What you will do? Will you treat or wait for 20 to 24 weeks? Obviously, that's our debate is, so debate is over actually. So, in, imagine a father sees his son smoking and enjoying, what does the father do? He asks the son to he treat him accordingly. Let you be careful and all those things will educate and treat so that he'll be a big citizen. So you have a big, good uh, pregnancy outcome, it has to be treated earlier. So my friend Rakesh is there, he's sitting here. So uh, there is a big uh, <laughs> social media things is happening. The cases of preterm delivery, postpartum hemorrhage, macrosomic babies, low birth weight babies, preterm babies have increased in Vidyadhar Nagar in Jaipur. Why I was thinking, then I realized that Dr. Rakesh is practicing there. <laughs> because he is not treating early pregnancy, uh, pregnancy, diabetes, GDM at all. So ladies and gentlemen, if you take the Banting lecture in 1980 of pregnancy and progeny, you can see uh, so how the weeks of pregnancy goes there. Insulin dependent can be from the beginning gestational diabetes from 24 weeks, anthropogenetic metabolic was there. So this was in 1980. So 2020, Norbert Frankel lecture in ADA. You can see type 1 and type 2 diabetes from the beginning, prevalent GDM from the beginning and incident GDM as well. So this is the importance of type 2 diabetes and early pregnancy in uh, the 2020 Norbert Frankel award lecture in diabetes care 2021. So why this to uh, topic is important, prevalence and importance of treatment, early abnormal meta glucose metabolism affects 70 to 18 percent of the pregnancy morbid worldwide. Untreated, it can lead to gestational diabetes, increasing risk of preeclampsia, macrosomia, cesarean delivery, early treatment with lifestyle changes and possible medication. Example, insulin helps reduce adverse outcome. So you can see the congenital abnormal uh, malformation going on. So early GDM has to be treated. So treat now or cry later. Let's not wait for the clear treatment fear. Proactive treatment leads to happier endings. So this is the definition of abnormal glucose metabolism. You can see on the right hand side, early abnormal glucose metabolism. This encamp encompasses abnormal glucose level detected before the onset of GDM, often identified in early pregnancy with may predispose women to GDM later. So this is the mechanism of insulin secretion to pancreas, which happens. So what happens in pregnancy, placental hormone and insulin resistance puts pregnant women in abnormal glucose metabolism. So this is where the insulin take uh, uh, dilemma happens in the body in a pregnant lady. So what are the outcome of abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy? Why there is need to treat early abnormal glucose? So this is from Professor Sheshaya. So pre-existing diabetes has to be treated early to prevent the long-term complications. So what are the complications? Preeclampsia, macrosomia, large for gestational age, prolonged labor, cesarean birth, long-term complication, very important, that is type 2 diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular outcome, and the metabolic syndrome. So high, this is an article published in Diabetology 2, 2019, high maternal early pregnancy non-fasting blood glucose level are associated with altered fetal growth. That is decreased fetal growth rates in mid-pregnancy, increased fetal growth rates from late pregnancy onwards. So these are the outcomes, maternal outcomes, which can be prevented if the uh, early GDM is treated. Neonatal outcomes can be prevented. All these complications, what you are seeing, can be prevented. So this is the HOP study. So early GDM, if you are treating early, you are able to reduce all these complications, large for gestational age, fetal hyperinsulinism, neonatal hypoglycemia, all this can be prevented. So recipe for glucose overload, risk factors for early abnormal glucose, these are the 
various factors, advanced age for pregnancy, higher body mass index, family history of diabetes, personal history of GDM, history of macrosomic infants, and multiparity. So this is Professor, uh, Professor Shesh has two articles you can see on the right hand side as well as on the left hand side. You can see there is early GDM you are seeing in the first trimester is 16 percent between 17 to 23 percent it is uh, 22 percent and uh, about 24 weeks it is 61 percent. On the right hand side you can see one more uh, study from Professor Sheshaya, 11,000 uh, GDM patients were included. You can see first trimester it was 31 percent, second trimester is 42 and third trimester is 25 percent. So in this last year article once again it emphasized treating the early pregnancy prevents the long, long term outcome. So a diagnostic abnormal glucose condition earlier in pregnancy called out for timely intervention to improve insulin sensitivity. This is a screening of dysglycemia during pregnancy, the inflammatory and oxidative stress aspects in GDM. ICMR guidelines once again says ideally all pregnant women in India should be screened for GDM, early GDM as well. AD also emphasized test for undiagnosed prediabetes and diabetes at the first prenatal visit in those with risk factors using standard diagnostic criteria. So once again you can see in this special recommendation says before 15 weeks of gestation the diagnosis has to be done. Even international pregnancy study group has says passing glucose more than 92, HbA1c more than 5.9 helps to diagnose uh, early GDM. So it is an Indian national guidelines. Tipsy support this once again says that uh, 75 groups of uh, glucose, two hours post glucose, more than 140 uh, early GDM has to be get, can be diagnosed. This is a precision in classification of hyperglycemia. You can see the diagnostic criteria here for the early GDM. So the recent concept: screen first trimester at first visit or 12 weeks of gestation, 24 to 28 weeks of gestation, and 32 to 34 weeks of gestation. These are the evidences for early treatment where exercise plays an important role, pharmacotherapy plus insulin plus metformin play, uh, plays a role and dietary intervention. So if you do that, your pre long term you are able to prevent the type 2 diabetes by up to 60% with 10 years of postpartum. You will be able to reduce the obesity as well. So as a clinician, Dr. Rakesh might have overlooked all these issues. He need to correct himself. So you can see here, we don't, we don't know how many pregnant females out there who need urgent treatment in Jaipur. Who is standing here, he is not treating early GDM at all. He is just standing and Two waiting. minutes, two minutes. So early Jaipur gets the glucose control. Addressing issues early is key to a healthy pregnancy. The sweet side of treating, treating early glucose issues, happy babies and poor parents. To be summarized with abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy, is the not a concern for only women health. Rising type 2 diabetes in early age could be the impact of abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy. As the clinician, we might have hold of the issue. Abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy must be treated at the earliest. We don't know how many females out there who need urgent to be treated. So early abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy should be treated. He is telling no. So what is the reaction you can see, you can see the reaction here, he is telling you no, but what happens, the famous reading personalities, they are laughing at him, please, 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 please. <laughs> so you can see, when he is saying, no, so most of them are laughing, the music didn't come actually, the music, nice music was also there. So ladies and gentlemen, my take is early GDM is an important aspect and it has to be treated in the long run to prevent morbidities and mortalities in pregnant as well as the babies. Thank you for patient sharing. Over to Rakesh. Thank you. Thank you, Arvinda. Excellent. I invite Rakesh to rebut. I'll just start now. And I think something, Rakesh must be doing something nice, sub South Indian patient. No. Either Jaipur Ake Dikhara, something is doing nice. 
first of all thank you dr pranjit sahu sir so for start rakesh uh, is time 20 please for this edutainment uh, session so entertainment was done by arvinda my job is now education so i'll talk more of science so uh, i request the moderator because when he took the uh, raise of hand uh, moderator uh, dr mithun there was only one person who was on my side so it's very tough for me to convince you know all these people so give me some more time i don't mind losing the debate uh, i'll overshoot probably by 2 3 minutes because the topic is important i might you know lose the debate the thing is that yeah, there is so much but one in okay okay, okay i'll start so uh, i won't have much of uh, you know right ye time mat kaatna it's still not moving here ha ah, okay. so this is the last uh, uh, photograph that i'll show there are no photo, no more photographs in my slides uh, everything else is just uh, you know science so uh, from arvinda's uh, you know talk it appeared that he's himself confused in gdm e gdm pre gdm so i'll just clarify those things first before i go ahead now uh, these are the three trimesters of pregnancy and we know that we were taught uh, since last uh, two decades that any type of glucose intolerance detected for the first time during pregnancy is gdm now uh, this was based on the hapo study uh, arvinda even showed hapo study uh, in his slides although it was on gdm not early gdm so hapo study they found that if the uh, sugar levels are high in the second third trimester the uh, there is a higher risk of macrosomia cholestasia uh, c sections and the neurological complications and based on the odds ratio of 1.75 they came at the cutoffs to be used for diagnosing gdm but then uh, gdm is because of placental hormones which increase the insulin resistance the basic pathophysiology is placental hormones and it comes at 24 weeks of pregnancy not in the early pregnancy it is a reversible condition and it largely leads to macrosomia because of you know hypoglycemia in that period and some perinatal or neural complications because of the hypoglycemia in the last 2 weeks of pregnancy the thresholds are lower which are as per the data from the hapo study but then while using this definition we were missing on the people who were having pre existing diabetes but they were diagnosed for the first time during pregnancy these are the people who have a different pathophysiology they don't have the you know uh, physiology pathophysiology of the gdm they are either having pre type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes the major defect there is the beta cell defect and in that case there is a problem with the embryogenesis which happens in the 8 weeks first 8 weeks now arvind also talked about uh, egdm increasing the chances of congenital uh, anomalies although it doesn't happen at that hbo's the first slide that he showed was hbo's of 6.9 which is already a pre gdm now pre gdm ko you can't call egdm so that's why i'm just clearing arinda there are some confusion you know, egdm cgdm pre gdm there are three terms okay. we are debating egdm okay. so uh, the congenital anomalies they happen because of the problem in the first 8 weeks that happens at the avc of you know 7 8 9 not at the avc of 6.5 or uh, less also they can be spontaneous abortions and uh, there are many problems which are because of the microvascular complications or the vascular dysfunction which is there in the people who are having diabetes or early stages of diabetes and the other associated conditions like obesity hypertension those are also there so uh, for pre gdm the conventional thresholds are of the same diabetes okay so now the definition is changed now gdm is only when it is diagnosed after 24 weeks if you diagnose it before that and the cutoffs of diabetes definition then you called as pre gdm this is the difference are in the clear now the, the third thing that is left is of the mild hyperglycemia which is there in the early part of pregnancy and there the term has come which is egdm now we'll talk about that so the questions we have are is mild hyperglycemia in the early pregnancy harmful at all if it is harmful does treating hyperglycemia improve the outcome and can it cause cause harm also to the patient and then are there any challenges in the practical application of this so i'll show some uh, solid evidence now this is a study which is published in 2022 here they looked at and the study is very well planned just to answer the question that we had in our mind these are the people who were you know around uh, 500 people they had uh, the numbers will be there in the next slide and uh, they did the ogtt in the early pregnancy before 20 weeks for all of them people uh, or the women who did not have gdm in the early stage they were again screened at the later stage and they randomized into two groups so even if you had egdm they did not treat the patients till 24 weeks they did the retest and if it was positive then they treated it and uh, the other group they started treating earlier so what was the result these are the conclusions treatment of all patients from early pregnancy did not improve the pregnancy outcomes but rather increased the small for gestational age babies 
and this is the uh, overall result of this study. You can see the numbers. There are 266, 286, and 248 uh, female uh, in the two groups. Uh, the numbers are here. The only, uh, you know, the statistically significant difference was in the SGA rate, which was very high in the people who was treated early, and there was no harm in not treating them. There are a few more studies. I'll just rush through them. Uh, so this is a study, another study in which uh, they compared the EGDM, uh, uh, and they found that the people who are having EGDM, they had a higher BMI. They were obese people. They had a family history of diabetes. They had a prior history of GDM, and they also had a chronic hypertension. So basically, these are the people who are at risk of diabetes, and you are diagnosing them at the early stage. Again, even these people, if you treat them, they require insulin, but there is no benefit at all. There is no difference in the outcomes. Another study, again, here the same outcome, 14 and 17, 14 and 71 pregnancies, divided into EGDM and CGDM. Look at the last line and the title itself. It says the worst outcomes despite early treatment. So even if you treat them, there is no benefit. Uh, this is a meta-analysis in which they looked at 13 core studies. Again, uh, the uh, risk of uh, you know, mortality, neutral mortality and hypoglycemia was higher in the uh, EGDM group, but despite treatment. So even after treating, you're not getting, getting to get any benefits. So what is the reason? The reason is that the problem is not hypoglycemia. The problem is not the mild hyperglycemia. They have the other problems. They are having hypertension. They are having obesity. They are having vascular dysfunction. They are having placental insufficiency because of that. So those are the things you cannot treat them just by lowering the sugar levels to below normal. Another thing, this is from the Tobogam study. He did not show that study. It was a landmark study. It should have been in his favor. In the Tobogam study, uh, they again uh, looked at the people who were EGDM and followed up them uh, after you know the 24 weeks, and they found that half of them became normal. So you diagnose EGDM in the early part, and after 24 weeks, half of them regress to normal. So you have unnecessarily treated them in the early part. Without it, also they, that becomes normal. Okay, and uh, then uh, the dif there is no difference if you treat them or not treat them. My time is running, so I'll just run fast now. Because I'm just right here. Now this was a very beautiful uh, systematic review, which was done by our own people, Om Lakhani, Nitin Kapoor, probably. He was there, Sanjay Kalra, and uh, 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 this is the you know line that they say that the uh, cutoffs or the threshold that you are using for EGDM are actually derived from the HAPO study, which was for the GDM people. It was not for the early pregnancy; it was for the 24 week pregnancy. Now look at this. There are 16 trials. This is a systematic analysis. Out of the 16 trials, what are the results? I'll just read out the last uh, you know conclusion from all the studies. The first one, there was uh, uh, you know the, if you adjust for the um, uh, other factors, there is no difference in the outcomes. EGDM, despite early treatment, there is a worse outcome. Third one, outcomes were similar. Fourth one, similar outcomes, maternal and fetal outcomes, EGDM treat or don't treat. Uh, despite early treatment or testing, doesn't help. Treatment did not give any benefits. Treatment did not offer any benefits. Regression analysis again shows EGDM had the uh, similar effect as EGDM treatment. Uh, there was a playoff. One study showed that there's a playoff. If you treat them early, you might reduce the LGA but at the cost of in increasing the risk of SGA. So either you go for LGA or SGA. Uh, another one, again, there were similar uh, you know, results. So again, all these three. So all these 16 trials that they included in the meta-analysis, only one trial was in the field. 15 trials were showing that either the results, the outcomes are similar between ECDM and CDDM, or even if you treat them, there is no benefit. You will rather harm them by causing more of SGAs. This was a Tobogam pilot study, and look at the line. So the females, were, the females who were treated, they had a higher rate of 36% rate of a small for gestational age because of the over treatment. This is the Tobogam study. Again, this was uh, showing that uh, there was no much difference. So I'll just run through because I don't have much of time. Now here, if you see the Tobogam study again, there is no, uh, there is a mild or modest, uh, you know, improvement in the uh, primary outcome, but which is at the cost of SGA and hypoglycemia. Look at the odds ratio. Everything is something around one. But 1.32 and 131, which is only for adverse outcomes in the form of SGAs and neutral hypoglycemia in people who are treated intensively in the early pregnancy. There was a Tobogam summit which was done after this trial uh, before publication, and all the investigators they gathered together, they discussed on the trial and the findings. I'll just run through, run through all these issues, and they all have agreed that they, it will just add to cost of therapy, it will add to confusion, stigma for the patient, and also uh, the psychological stress of waiting, you know, being diagnosed GDM in the early phase. These are all the barriers that they listed out. It will uh, affect the maternal health, uh, the mental health of the mother, and uh, then there are no uh, guidelines or there are no criteria which can be applied. So these are the same people who did the Tobogam study. Now these are some papers which uh, I published with Shashank sir, and long back, 2006, 
uh, we wrote this that if you treat intensively, unnecessarily, just you know running behind the sugar levels, you can probably increase the chance of IOG or SGA, and it will be uh, affecting the uh, fetus uh, adversely. So coming back to the uh, questions that we started with, is hyperglycemia in early pregnancy harmful? It is uh, not harmful. It is associated with all these things, high BMI and uh, insulin resistance and all these things. There are conflicting reports about the outcomes. Uh, treatment doesn't benefit at all. So does treating hyperglycemia improve outcomes? I would say strongly no. And we must remember that this is our Hippocratic oath. First, do no harm. At least don't harm the baby which is not born yet. So coming back to the same questions and the answers are it doesn't cause harm, it doesn't benefit by treating, uh, it can worsen the outcomes and that's why we should not treat these people. Thank you. So, even half an hour more time also you would have talked and tried to convince you that the treating early period is not good. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, datas are there, which is showing that treating early GDM has, has a long-term benefit in preventing. We might have shown through data, if you see in the slides, the topmost parts are covered, actually. <laughs> Most of the slides. Because he's taking only the parts which is telling that those things. But our, the important lines you would have skipped, try to skip. That is the cleverity of Jaipur people. But anyway, uh, anyway, that the people are here to accept the things, accept the data. Imagine a person, what treating is what? When a person you are treating a hyperglycemia, you are educating them with a good lifestyle. It's not about, not about putting metformin or insulin. You are telling you eat properly. The cravings are there in pregnancy. All are eating junk foods as we saw in previous talks and all. Everybody is changing ultra processed food they are taking. We are educating them, do, don't eat this, eat a right food. That is enough, that will be have a good outcome. It's not about always treating means go on uh, putting on the metformin, insulin, no. It's about the educating is important. So what simple education will give a long term benefit. So that is what to say, don't go by half cooked data from Dr. Akesh Parekh. What I have told is this. <laughs> First of all, Arvinda, uh, is it clear now? CGDM, EGDM, PGDM, GDM? Okay, now it's clear to him. And, uh, not a clear, will. <laughs> so now at least he has accepted that don't treat them, just educate them. That's what he said last, that we are not going to be them insulin or metformin, we're just going to, you know, educate them, and that we anyways do. So the debate was not whether you should educate the patient people or not, that we anyways do. The debate was you should not treat them. Secondly, all the, all the, uh, so I think he has uh, uh, concealed, so I don't have anything, anything to say. Thank you. So now let's have a show of hand who are still with Arvinda. There were 46 people. So, I think dropping hands are dropping like very, very fast. <laughs> half, 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 one this side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Less than 10 now. So how many nine? How many people are with Rakesh? So Rakesh is a clear winner. I wouldn't call that. Now oh so over to Sunil Gupta sir for expert. I'll just read the uh, First of all, let me congratulate uh, both of them, Rakesh and Arvinda. Wonderful uh, debate. Let's go big hand to both of them. <coughs> and both of them have uh, were uh, sticking to the topic, but unfortunately, I'm just going through as an expert because the to I'll write the exact to topic here. Early abnormal glucose metabolism. They have not written mild, moderate, or severe hyperglycemia. Early abnormal glucose metabolism in pregnancy should be treated or should not be treated. There is no doubt, there is no debate. Any abnormal glucose metabolism in the early pregnancy will signal. Now, everyone knows the Lancet data that 100, 10 crores, 10.1 crores, we have diabetes. You have 13.6 uh, crores pre diabetics. Adult population around 90 crores. So, practically every fourth woman who's coming to the ANC clinic is likely to have either a pre diabetes or diabetes. And all, no one 
how many of, of these women or men anyone have you ever tested most average age of the pregnancy is around 29 years in india 29 to 30 years now at this moment how many of you have tested your blood glucose when you were in third in 28 and 27 no one of us so every fourth one will be missed out if you don't do the test and if you don't treat it and we say gdm in uh, uh, yeah, GDM in uh, IGT in non-pregnant state, GDM in pregnancy. You got this? IGT in non-pregnant state that is above 140 to 199 is GDM in pregnancy. So practically every fourth woman is likely to have hyper this some kind of dysglycemia because either she will be pre or diabetic. So that's very important message here. So maybe debate it's good for entertainment and very important message has to be taken that every woman should be screened. And even a mildest form of hyperglycemia should be treated. And that is why I appreciate Bansi Bhai. He has not written mild, moderate, or severe because he wanted to have a very healthy discussion to both the sides. If we'd have written mild, moderate, and then we would have a deb debate. So there is no debate. Every woman should be screened. Every woman should be treated. Of course, 70% of GDM will be doing only well with uh, diet therapy. The rest of them may need pharmacotherapy. Keep a good follow up. There is no debate on the glycemic targets. 90 fasting, postprandial, 120, no debate, no controversy. Diagnostic criteria you might have, but there is no debate on the glycemic targets. Of course, you don't have to, when you, when you talk about over uh, this uh, high, uh, small for SGA babies, where we are not expected to over treat also. And very important, if you go through the guidelines of ADA 2024, now they have given the lower cutoffs also. Earlier they did not read. They were saying less than 90. Now they say 70 to 90. 100 to 120. 2 hour, 100 to 120. 3 hour, 110 to 140. So they have now given target the lower cutoff. So now you have to be little balance of this. Of course it is not that easy to manage this particular glycemic target. But certainly now you have. So neither we have to over treat nor we have to over treat. But all said and done. Both of the speakers have done, do, have done literally wonderful job and have, at least they have sensitized all of us that we should always screen every woman in India when they come to the ANC clinic. If, if the first is negative, go repeat it in the second trimester. If it is second negative, repeat it in the third trimester. If you miss out in second, at least first and third, first visit in the la third trimester, at least twice, you should be do, uh, screening these women and see to it that you treat them enough. Very important, it is not neonatal outcome. Both of them have spoken about the neonatal outcome. It is more important than is the intrauterine abnormal environmental milieu, which we need to keep healthy so that this generation should not develop diabetes when we celebrate 100 years of Indian independence in 2047. That's the main message, that no new case of hyperglycemia should be detected when we celebrate 100 years after 25 years. If you treat, just focus for these six or nine months of the pregnancy and you can prevent diabetes rather than prevent going thinking of primary prevention, we should, talk, we should talk about primordial prevention because most of the studies will show that the neonatal outcome is almost similar in all the arms, both the arms always. So with this, I stop here. Congratulations once again and thank you very much.